Hello everyone, welcome to more nuclear scramjet testing in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. We have here a modified model of my scram spike, the scramjet aerospike, except of course now we do not have aerospikes, we have instead nuclear engines. And I've made a custom model uh, with sort of this bump here and uh, also a cargo bay because that is how this uh, version is going to be used. It's not going to have crew, it's going to have cargo and so that's the look of the cargo bay there. And the bump is so that we can fit more hydrogen. In fact, actually, this whole part has been uh, increased in height. So we have more cargo bay space and also more space for extra hydrogen because now we're not using oxygen and hydrogen is not very dense. With the aerospikes, we were using the oxygen and because of the density of oxygen, we could get enough delta V. Uh, I've also moved the jet ramjet engines to the body here so that we can fit the big nuclear engines. Now when I say nuclear scramjet, the scramjet doesn't actually do anything nuclear, right? It's because we have the nuclear engines plus a scramjet that's a nuclear scramjet. Uh, the, these engines here uh, produce uh, 613 kilonewtons, which is not, you know, low. And they're basically a replacement for the SNTPs that we were using in the mock-up version that I introduced before. And yeah, basically each of these is equivalent to four of those. And not much has changed except the nozzle is a little bit more vacuum optimized. Actually, the reason why the nozzle is more like this is because I needed the reactor to be closer to the center of mass. If the nuclear engines were in the tail, um, that and had a shorter nozzle, for instance, then the reactor would pull the center of mass further back. I think, though, maybe I've overdone it, and the center of mass is a bit forward, but I'm not too sure the center of lift here is telling me the truth. So it's a bit complicated to just look at this and go, oh yeah, we need the center of mass further back. And of course, things change when this is empty, or more empty. I wish it didn't change that much, but it does change a bit. So we'll have to think about that, but I also don't fully trust that center of lift, but then again the wing is here. So we might have to move the wing up, which would break the look of it, or we could shorten the nozzle on this and move the, react, uh, the reactor back and thereby pull the center of mass back. But let's see how it actually handles in flight and on the way down. I have made an adjustment to adjustable landing gear, well, Kerbal Foundries, which has adjustable landing gear now. And that's that I've reduced the mass, the base mass of adjustable landing gear, especially this model here. And I did that in Realism Overhaul because, as it was, the main landing gear was becoming 24 tons. Uh, because it scaled up to two times. And I just couldn't have 24 ton landing gear. Uh, I mean, I hope that's reasonable. As it is, it's still 12.5 uh, tons. So, I mean, 12.8 tons, actually. So, I hope 12.8 tons for the main landing gear is good enough for everybody. I, I did. So, I've made a change to realism overhaul to make sure that that landing gear wasn't ridiculous, which it was, it was getting to be ridiculous. So. And in fact, even 13.5 tons, we'll see how it does, because I haven't gotten this to orbit yet or anything like that. Uh, we'll see how it does and decide whether maybe I should reduce the mass of that even further. Okay, so with all that being said, let's go outside. We, we're not carrying any cargo. Maybe I should carry some cargo, but I haven't actually put the node in for the cargo bay. Let's just get it to orbit first and see how it goes. Okay, we're here at Tampico at my new facilities and well we've got the stock thing going here so I probably got a plume problem atmospheric got pod on I built the jets into the body and instead they do extend uh, incidentally they do extend into the body so the tank doesn't like c cover this area so anyway but yeah maybe I should separate them into their own part instead of having them built into the body, because I think them and the RCS are interfering with each other as far as effects are concerned or something like that. Okay, anyway, here we go. At least they seem to have sound, that's good. Maybe it's not too bad having the little stock effect there. Oh, there's wiggly. Uh, I don't want- oh no! I don't want it to be wobbly. Ah! Go, 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 go. 
it should be able to take off much much slower than that so the problem is the big control surfaces here aren't really active it's only the outboard ones that are active I should just change that I should just make them both active that has to be done in unity basically but then the big control surfaces will also do roll they'll be paired together I don't know how to make two different control surfaces on the same wing piece. I don't think you can. As far as what benefits there are to using the nuclear engines, not a whole lot. <laughs> um, it does have uh, lower takeoff speed and lower mass uh, on the runway, so that might be helpful. On the other hand, it's, it's about the same mass coming down anyway, so... Uh, maybe a little bit more. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the nuclear engines are heavier than the aerospikes were. In order to convince everybody that this is sort of safe, uh, that is why we don't have passengers on here, it's just a cargo thing. And also, it would stay in orbit for 30 days after the nuclear engines fire and uh, cool off so it won't be coming down all irradiated or anything. And then we would have the RCS deorbit the thing. So, that would be the plan. It actually has six backward-facing RCS thrusters. And it, the liquid oxygen you see here is for the fuel cell, so it run on fuel cell for that month. Okay, 20 kilometers and Mach 2 here. It's complicated. There's this interstellar air intake and this air intake, and I'm worried that they might, like, conflict or something. Probably I shouldn't have had KSB Interstellar in the install that I was doing this in. Okay, we are at Mach 3. It'll hit a hard limit on these. This mode, we need ramjet mode in order to get too much beyond this, so... So let's do that. Unfortunately, ramjet mode for some reason doesn't have any sound. That's been pretty consistent when I switch modes. Okay, that's Mach 5 and really all we're expecting out of the ramjet, so here we go, open, open, let's make sure everything's open, and I'm surprised, previously it caused a lot more drag when I opened that up. Hmm. Okay, anyway, it's ramjet time. Be careful not to let it explode. Uh oh, we don't want to go that high. Oh, it exploded. <laughs> I was changing the pitch and noting other things. And I didn't notice the heat creep up on me again. Okay, well, we have to do that again. Always happens this way. Oh, why are we sort of tilted too? Okay. Theory. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh, not the. Ah, uh, try that again. I shouldn't use adjustable landing gear. It's been rough. Okay. It was better in previous versions, I swear. Alright. We are headed in the right direction. Okay, we're hitting the jet limit. And ramjet mode. 
So I'm not saying that this is necessarily a good idea in general. It's, it's a Kerbal idea though, I feel. Sort of an adaptation of the stock Kerbal way of using jets and a nerve engine. Okay, we are at Mach 5, so here we go. Really have to manage the throttle carefully here. Oh, there it goes again. Oh, it's wobbling a bit. It's going too high right now. That's not what I wanted. Oh, we can't go that low. Maybe I should have just kept it on atmospheric autopilot. Okay, still accelerating. And there's a high mode on the scramjet. Okay, 42 kilometers, past 3,000 meters per second. Oh, uh, we might need more heat protection on the nuclear engines if they're overheating right now. Mach 10. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, the nuclear engine. Ah. Uh. Oh, we'll have to go up to avoid overheating the nuclear engine, it looks like. So, switching modes. There's now high mode on the scramjet. Uh-oh, uh, 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 Well, this is complicated with the nuclear engine trying to overheat now. Oh, okay, well. Ah, uh, feels unsettled on those. Ah, uh, very unstable. Hold on. No propellants, it says. Well, we're too high. Well, I forgot that the RCS also takes hydrogen and oxygen. We might need to change that. Oh, it's keeping the RCS on for some reason. Interesting. I don't remember ordering that. Should be getting enough air for it. Hmm. I can't throttle up. That's interesting. We have electric charge. I don't know why I can't throttle up or turn off the RCS. I didn't have any... We don't have comm network. Yeah, it's not turning on though. Where are we? <laughs> Cuba! Maybe that's why. They're interfering with our control. Hmm. Yeah, that's weird. I can't throttle up. And I don't know why. I mean, I can control the plane. <laughs> I can control the plane, but I can't throttle up. When we have electric charge. And it was working before. Okay, well, something about... Oh, okay. Something about the nuclear engine stopped our ability to throttle up. Yeah, once I turn on the nuclear engines, you can see... Okay, let's not do that. I activate the nuclear engines, and I can't throttle up. This is not a behavior they used to have.
This is just a modification of my old nuclear engines, incidentally. Well, we're not landing without landing gear. Um, I had used these nuclear engines a lot before, but I don't know why activating it should prevent us from throttling up. Never seen that before. And it automatically turns on the RCS when I activate these. This is all very confusing. I don't know. I, I, the, the, this engine is just a modification of the old engines that I used, for instance, in my To Mars and Beyond series and stuff like that. So I don't know why it should be acting like this now. Of course, that was in 1.8, KSP 1.8. And now these seem to be acting differently. So, yeah. If anybody has an idea, please tell me, but we've got a little bit of a pickle when it comes to testing our nuclear scramjet. So, with that being the situation right now, a very perplexing problem, I'll have to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.